trust it. Although this alters the numbers, and although it adds some uncertainty to the numbers themselves, it doesn't alter the most important part of this process. The comments, the reasons offered by those respondents, and also the preferences indicated by those who decided to engage in the spirit of the exercise of what is your first and what is your second preference. That being said, there were some very clear clusters of concerns that came out of this. First is that loss of income. And commercial return to the council has been identified by a number of speakers, despite the fact that the return to the council last year was less than a third of what the numbers have actually been quoted, and despite the Takapuna Beach Business Association, Tourism New Zealand, Hospitality Association of New Zealand disputing the amount that is actually invested into local economy and local businesses, this board needs to ensure any proposal that occurs on the northern end uh, at least, at the very least, adds to the vibrancy of our business and local community, because that is clearly uh, the, the, one of the key motivations behind the feedback we received. We also need to make sure that no private interest or profit is allowed to dominate that northern, that this public asset. Second, that the uh, marine activity would restrict access to the reserve, not just the boats, not just the physical structures, and, and obviously the terms elite, um, elite private sailors with expensive toys have been used again and again. And so we owe it to the community, we owe it as this board to ensure that any proposal has an ironclad community access agreement, and we need to ensure that green open space is fundamentally available to all of the community to use as and when they they choose. That is what open space is, that is what public space is. <clears throat> the other concern was that there were going to be these unsightly administrative buildings um, which Yachting New Zealand were going to use to house their, sta their full-time staff. And we have to be absolutely certain that once the manager's um, accommodation and office is, is removed from this camp, this site, if that is the, the direction that we head in, we need to make sure that there is no administrative building of any kind allowed on this northern end of the reserve. And so members, there can be no decision tonight on either landowner consent or resource consent. We've already heard that the processes required for those are quite different. But what we do need to decide is to set down the path of what will give us free and open access to all. And so, unfortunately, it does appear that at least for the present company, what, is, what we are confronted with is an extremely difficult decision between what is right and what is popular. And my view is that they are, they are, not, they are not the same thing. And so, although I have agonised Although I have agonised over this decision time and time again, and the personal attacks and insults have not been particularly helpful for that, from back when we started this process in the first term to where we got to today, I have concluded, and my position is, that we cannot, or there is not sufficient evidence, at least at this point, to go back on that bright horizon that we set our gaze to when we first engaged in this process. And realistically, I cannot see a reason why the board should reverse the management plan and go back on the community, the community vision that we formed. And despite what some have said about my reasons for supporting this proposal, my predetermination potentially, that I've been bought off, that I'm just trying to impress some people, I'm not a yachty, and I'm not. That's obvious. And although I'm a recreational camper, I've frequently said that my camping occurs outside of this area. My only interest, and I just want to make this clear, my only interest is the oath that I took to, this, to the, all of our community when I took this role, not just the 7% who engaged in this feedback exercise, and that is to faithfully and impartially, and according to the best of my skill and judgment, execute... Yes, Member Gillen, I mean Cohen, sorry. Um, I do note in the April meeting, um, point B, you actually uh, voted against, and I'll read it out, notes that the board has an obligation to act in the best interest of the Denport local board area, as reflected in our declaration that board members take when being sworn into office, and noting the declaration does not mention the interests of wider Auckland Council, and that some parts of Auckland Council, brackets given, 
For example, it has set aside three million to help develop and progress the National Ocean Water Sports Centre, now called the Community Marine Activity Hub, may or may not have interests that align with the local board area and local community. And that in order to consider any future landowner application, the board has an obligation to engage with local people in our board area via a process that enables them to rank their first and second preferences as provided in resolution C that will assist in this engagement. And you voted against it. All right, Member Cohen, that's something that you can raise in your part of the debate. No, I'm, just, I, I'm, going to respond. Of no, I'm going to respond because I think you've answered your own question by the length of that and the wordiness and the confusion of that resolution. I remember when it was moved at the time, I didn't like the insinuation that parts of the Auckland Council structure do not have the best interests of our community in heart. And so all I'm saying is that that is that reason and that reason alone, my, uh, my oath to take this action and this course of action impartially and faithfully, according to the best of my skill and judgment, for the entire Devonport Takapuna local wood area is the only is the reason that I, the only resolution I can support tonight is the one that sets us down the path towards a proposal which provides as much access to as many people as possible. And the only proposal we have on the table is the one that I believe these recommendations send us towards. So that is my term, members, and I'm very proud to move this motion. But um, can I note a standing orders that I did take on the um, misrepresentation, and I'm sure we'll find it, 3.14 something, um, and noted that you feel that you're not taking what you're voting against. If that's your ruling, that's fine. Can you can have it noted in the minutes. Are there any speakers to this item? Member O'Connor. Well, Mr. Chair, since you have mentioned me, in 2002, when the lease was being renewed, and bearing in mind it took up the whole area before Donaldson's Dairy was, before the, dairy, the cafe was built, there was a move in the community to have open space. And I took up a petition. And I took up a petition of over a thousand people to get rid of the camping ground. The council, I was a community board member, the council voted with Diane and, and George here um, to vote to keep the camping ground. There was a lot of debate. Wayne Thompson wrote about it in the Herald. There was a big debate. Since then, the mood of the community has changed. And one of the reasons it's changed is because it's been cut down and there's that lovely open space which unfortunately boats are sitting on day in and day out under two signs that says no boats to be stored there but the people love that reserve and I've never seen it overflowing except, except when there's been a demonstration of some description. Um, it was only about March or April for some reason we all got emails, and I printed all mine off, and I presented them here. I got 400 emails, and I think I replied to every single one. Yes, Even though my husband, my husband was dying, but I did it. And 10 of those emails supported the boating clubs, or supported Yachting New Zealand. Where were those people tonight? Yes. Yeah. I waited. People turned up here tonight to speak. And I didn't know most of them. I thought they'd come to support storing 50 boats on our reserve. Where are they? Not at all. Then, when the management plan went out and we got 1,200 responses because there were no groups pushing it, there were, was a petition, I've now found out, that was came from the camping ground of 2030 saying they wanted to keep the camping ground. But we wouldn't accept those, not at all. They were a petition. People had signed the name. But we did accept the two, 245 pro forma signing names, and one was signed by one of our members here, to keep to have the, the marine hub there. We accepted those as individual submissions. I argued about it, but I was outnumbered. I was outnumbered for three years, and I was outnumbered. Then we had another petition 
presented to us last October. Now, Gavin Sheehan presented it to preserve our reserve, keep the camping ground. We all know that camping grounds are temporary. They can be closed up in a day and we've got open space. That petition was 250 people, 2,350 2, people. So all in all, 12,494 people have said since 2002 that they want to keep the camping ground. They like the way it is. They like the hedge dividing it off. The camping ground has been there for many years. Your friend, Sir Stephen Tyndall, he camped there when his parents were building a house. He was in the fifth form at Takapuna Grammar. He camped there. Lots of people camp there when the kitchens are done. Lots of elderly people who don't have room for grandchildren have their grandchildren staying there. And people in the community have fallen in love with the camping ground. And yet you, Mr Chair, threatened to take me to the High Court that I was biased. I am listening. I am listening to the community. To, to paraphrase Alan Moore, people shouldn't be afraid of local government. Local government should be afraid of their people. Yeah. So just off the back of that, members, I'm going to move an extension of time because we are now past the 10.30 uh, limitation on meetings. So I'm going to move, seconded by Member Hale. Um, and um, all those in favour say aye. 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 Contrary, carried. So um, with that, are there any further speakers to the... Item, Member Gillen. Thank you. Um, I'll move an amendment. And can we just... OK, so it's, it's actually just got to be edited slightly. So if we keep B there, we just need to find the position where it, mm -hmm. where it goes um, later. And with C, I'll amend that to, based on this result, the board requests a detailed report outlining the process and indicative costs and timelines associated with pursuing option two from relevant subject matter experts within council. And then the rest, um, the rest should stand. Um, and so the, the main change there, so that it's not contradictory to mm -hmm. um, your assert motion, is that I've deleted wishes to pursue option two. And so, <coughs> so what it is, it really adds on where you have requested, and I can't see it now, but... <sighs> So where you've got requested that Auckland Council properties be, uh, begin discussions, etc., on the termination, then I've added in that in the interests of being well informed and having good information before us and being able to make good decisions, we need both sides of um, the information on the process. So I've, um, I've added that in. If um, my seconder before wants to re-second yeah, that amendment. Thank you. Um, and just speaking to that, mindful that you said that we'd all get an extension of time, and I, um, I'm grateful for that um, ruling beforehand. Um, I too want to thank everybody here tonight, on whatever side of the debate, um, which seems to be too, too untold, um, <laughs> because everyone that's spoken has actually given quite a lot of themselves tonight, and I salute you for that. It's um, it's very brave coming to a forum like this, and um, you know a lot of people poured their heart out, and uh, very passionate people for a community and activity, and um, their their views and ideas for that. So I just sort of want to acknowledge that. Um, I am a little bit distressed about the abusive process um, tonight, and the Wi-Fi stuff up. I mean, it's an absolute disgrace when an issue like this is so important. And some of us tried to get, and I, and I was told that Alison was going to support it and didn't in the end, the Bruce Mason Theatre so that um, more of us um, could participate in democracy. And that's a shame. Um, 
we also hear and we, we heard a discussion about how people in the community are sick of consultation. And I think it was Eileen that said, well, actually, people are sick of not being listened to during that consultation. And this really, I think this is a blow for democracy on, in, in the council. And I've been concerned about like the, the rates increase, the lack of consultation on the roading levy that we never heard about and suddenly got dropped in, um, the, the sell-off of the ports, uh, Bayswater Marina, a whole lot of things where people are just being walked over by this council and, and it's appalling and this is just one part of that. But 8,000, nearly 8,000 people participated and voted mm. in this, more than we've had on anything else in this board area and probably more than um, all other boards have had probably more than, I remember, North Shore City Council days as well. Nearly 8,000 people vote in the process, and I think that's a fantastic result. And to have that then rubbed, the result rubbed in people's faces, I think is appalling. It doesn't really matter what the second preference was. 80% of people said this is what they wanted. 80%. Jam Key or, um, you know, any political leader would be, you know, they'd just love a result like that um, on election day. But now what we hear is, oh, well, that's true. But actually what they really meant was something totally different. <laughs> I mean to say, 80% want something, but what they really meant was quite different to that. Mm -hmm. and, and I think um, that's an abuse of, of people's intelligence and um, yeah.